I was grilling a chicken the other day. Okay. Oh, wait. Uh, I got to tell you, don't take this the wrong way. I, I, I heard I, I was grilling this chick the other day. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's about to be a whole different podcast. Uh, I was like, oh, yeah? Yeah. Hold on. Let me, sit up, let me sit up for this one. Hold on. We are rolling. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Creative Businessmen. This is part two of the Jason Ledford episode. Uh, in case you didn't see the first one, if you didn't, go back and watch it. But Jason is a uh, filmmaker, musician. He's an all-around creative guy. Um, you know, if, if you haven't seen the show before, we, we try to bring on other creative entrepreneurs and artists and, and, you know, people from various walks of life. And we, we find out what inspired them to do what they do today. And, and, and our hope is to inspire you guys to pursue your goals and, and, and maybe encourage you to, to pursue something that you've, you've always wanted to do or something you're currently doing. And, uh, or maybe come on the show and tell us about what you do. So, um, I'm sure you'll enjoy the episode. Jason's a really interesting dude. Uh, we, we, we always get a lot out of our guests in, in as far as inspiration and ideas. And, and that's really what the show is about. It's about good ideas and, and just sharing. And um, I, I wasn't a part of this second conversation, but I heard it was great. And I'm sure it is. And, uh, and I think you guys will really enjoy it. I, I'm going to check it out myself. Uh, also, if you, if you do follow the, the channel or you've, you've just discovered the channel, be sure to like and subscribe. We really appreciate your support. Um, I hope you enjoy the episode. Here you go. So, uh, I don't know, man. I'm, I feel like, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I think, uh, and how old your kid? Seven, going on seven. He'll okay. be, uh, be seven in March. I don't know about you, but like for me, my kid's aging is where I saw my age. Like, like that's really what's making me feel. I'm like, so my oldest son, Daniel, just turned 11. Sebastian's nine. Cam's five. So it's like. I don't know that that's really where I'm like, Oh, right. And so like, uh, financially making great decisions, been you know, I haven't always, but, mm -hmm. uh, doing well, I'm checking all these boxes and then I'm sitting here going, and I say this to everybody. I'm like, Hey man, sacrifice. You got to miss birthdays. You miss birthdays, you miss anniversaries. You miss trips. You miss school. I did all that fine. But now I'm in a situation where I think I can, I, I don't have to miss those things anymore. Right. So now I'm like, wait a second. And then you look, and this phone sometimes robs me of time with my children because I get caught in that loop, right? Like I'm mentally tired, so I just want to check out, yeah. right? Shut and the brain down. Shut the brain bit. down, right? And sometimes it's music. I love, man. I, I'll get lost in music for hours sometimes, right? Yeah. And then I come out of it, and my kids are going to bed. And mm -hmm. I'm like, fuck. You know, like, so that's where I see, like, the negative of it. Like, I should... So I've just got to retool when I'm using it and keep it as a tool. Like if I'm going to check out, I don't wait. I don't need to check out until after my kids are asleep. There is some diligence that needs to be done with it, right? Like yeah. you have to uh, be mindful not to just let that thing lead you constantly. Yeah. I, I catch myself doing it. Like I said a couple of years ago, I, I had to take that break. I found myself only communicating with people uh, through my through my phone and Facebook and all that. And, uh, getting rid of Facebook was one of the best things I, I, I could do for myself. And now I, you know, uh, I'm looking at Instagram and I catch myself. Uh, I have this, I have the alarm set on to it where it's like, oh, you've been on X amount of time. It's an hour 45. Yeah. And usually, I swear to God, it's at about 2 o'clock in the morning. It's like, boom, you've been on for an hour 45. Because <laughs> I'm laying in bed and at midnight I pick it up. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I'm like, yeah. oh, new day. This doesn't count. Yeah. And, and I get fucking sucked into that thing really quickly. And uh, one of the goals I have is midway through this next year hopefully to just not be on instagram and it, i shut all the uh notifications off i deleted the app from my home screen so that i have to um uh, i caught myself just picking my phone up and swiping and hitting the instagram thing just opening the app yeah i, I wasn't even thinking about it it was just because i picked up my phone Abby, so yeah. i had to delete it off my home screen and yeah, I, I think use it, but make it a tool for you. Like, that's what yeah. I'm trying to do. I'm not yeah. going to say I'm perfectly doing it, but I have no, if you send me a text message, it doesn't come through. It's silenced, right? Yeah, yeah. So, because all my businesses don't run through text, we have a specific app that we use. So, so, you know, I, yeah, when I check it, I'll respond to you, but it's, it's not there, right? Because if there's like, I've done this, which you had talked about, you and Neil had talked about, I've got like not even 10 people that they have a bypass. So if they call yeah. or they text, it comes through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Other yeah. than that. Cool. Yeah. That yeah. was a big thing for me is figuring that out. Yeah. What's, uh, you guys both have 
uh, young kids their relationship with technology right now? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. My son can work a, a tablet like nobody's business. Yeah. We were yeah. talking about this the other day. It's, it's, uh, you know, we were talking about Neil, Neil's uh, daughter, and it's like, uh, you t- if, if you think about us right now, take your parents and then take your kids, right? Your kids, however young they are, they know how to function technology better than your parents do. Yep. And it's going to be that way forever. Like, yeah. uh, your, your son, I, I promise you, your son knows how to work an iPad better than I do. Yeah, oh, I guarantee it. He'll look at me, and once I show him one time, he's, he's got it, yeah. and then... I'll try to, he wants to do something. I say, here, let me show you. I know, I can figure it out. I can figure it out, Dad. Let me do it. Let yeah, he'll be it. showing you in a couple of weeks. Yeah. yeah. But I tell you, it, it's been great. I mean, I'm missing the, off, off of what you said about missing so many graduations, dates, and everything everybody else has done in their entire life. I've done that for the last 10 years. I've grinded so daggum hard that I'm, you know, there's been graduations, my families, and everything. I'm just like, I just can't do it. You know, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, in order for me to get to where I need to be, my goals have to take precedence yep. a little bit of time. And I apologize for that, you know, profusely. It was like my son was born, and then three weeks later, I was probably in Charlotte filming a movie. Three weeks yeah. after he was born, I was like, I got to do it. It's part of what we're doing, you know. Yeah. and. He was five, I guess, five, yeah, five, and yeah, when we were filming Kill Giggles. That was my fault. I had, yeah. I had to go. I had to go, you know. Yeah. I, uh, you were talking about this with your with technology and your family already, and now you, you're, you're starting to try to spend more time uh, getting into that. How do you feel with your, with your kids and, and their relationship with technology? Well, we limit it anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, I still make them read physical books because, mm-hmm. I don't know, that, that's probably an old school thing, but I just – I want, they already, the world is so much about screen time. And so I'm trying to give them some time where they have without it. And then, so there's this thing I've, I've watched quite a few videos on it. So we've been putting into play about basically like a a serotonin reset, like Mm -hmm. essentially a reset for the brain, let's say like, right. So we get this, um, I don't know if it's actually searching the app or if it's the anticipation of searching the app, right? Like there's this excitement about looking for something or seeing who's doing something or the newest YouTube video or whatever the thing is. Right. And that excitement is addictive. Yeah. Right. And so that anticipation of what we might find. And it's like, you can find it so much more often. We, we had similar things, but it was analog. Right. right? And and so those rushes were happening on occasion and now you can get them uh, every 30 seconds. So, so we try to create time without any technology, try to get out and go do things. Right. So, you know, because technology is part of their future, that's fine. But we're trying to create times when it's not, right? Like, and I think I would equate this to, you know, um, people. There's this famous photo that goes around of people on a commuter train, I think, in New York. And they've all got, you, you just see a row of the mm-hmm. paper, right? Every single row has the paper out and they're reading the paper, right? Mm-hmm. So it's the same, except people wouldn't walk around with that paper out. 24 7 which is what's going on right now right. yeah just walking across with it just like yeah i see it walk, i've seen people walk into the buildings i've seen people walk into poles i mean there's walking you know, to traffic yeah <laughs> i mean at, at the at western I, I literally when i get in the car to drive i i really have to pay attention because they walk with their phone yeah. right there mm-hmm. just walk right out oh, you see they got driving earbuds on the in now yeah and you know it's like yep. but my son i'm we 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 probably need to do a little bit better uh, about you know timing out on some of the technology but i i feel lucky at points mm-hmm. is he'll watch his shows and he'll watch maybe he gets he's gets, probably educational stuff too though yeah he loves he's yeah. The legos because yeah. what mine does most of mine he's watching how nature is made yeah. uh, animal shows dinosaur shows just yep. constantly there is this one show that he loves to watch and it's uh <laughs> Don't even want to give them a plug. They got enough. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a it's a it's a family down in Texas, and they film everything they do. And I respect their hustle, you know. But you know, he tunes in. That's his thing. He tunes into them. That is that is yeah. his little candy every now and then. And then he'll turn it off. And so he'll only watch so much. He'll he'll play a game for maybe about an hour. Yeah. He'll put it down. He immediately goes and builds something yeah. that he's seen in the game. Or go reenact or draw something that he saw on the shows. Yeah, see, I think I think uh, 
every, the generation of kids coming up right now is is going to blow us out of the water. I think I think historically every generation has been better than the previous, and they're getting uh, much more intelligent. I say all the time. Um, Every kid who's on TikTok making videos right now is a better editor than everybody who edited in the 90s and 80s. You know what I mean? Just, <laughs> they, they have more uh, functionality. I do worry, though, about um, uh, a generation of kids who doesn't have to spend any time by themselves uh, with their thoughts and in their head. Yeah. Right now, if you, if you took a, a, a 14, 15-year-old kid and you took all the TV away, you sat them in a room by themselves it would be the introduction to themselves for the first time where they'd yeah. have to, you know, I, I worry about that. Yeah. You know? So I'll do something else that I think is kind of fun. And this is just, I don't know, it's me, but um, we'll, we'll ride. So let's say we have a two-hour car ride. Like, no iPads, right? No, mm-hmm. no we're, we're, we, They have them, right? Yeah. But those iPads are safe for the ride home when Daddy's exhausted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? And I need them to chill. I need them yeah. to just, like, check out. So all day, no iPad, no ride down there, no iPad. And then that's like my, you know what, Daddy needs. Daddy's gonna pull an audible. Yeah. Hey, how about iPads? Oh yeah. And then yeah. they're they Some zone out for the ride home. Yeah. And Daddy can Daddy can chill. <laughs> so, but uh, on the you, way there, and then you get the conversation on the way there. Right? Oh, 100 percent. We what we do conversation, and then we everybody picks songs and we sing. Oh yeah. So like we'll we'll do each, each we do it in different. The kids get to pick how we do it, but you know, let's say the youngest kid goes first, they get to pick a song they to listen to, and then we go through. We do a couple of cycles. You know, right now. Uh, I mean, sometimes we will we'll we'll pick a song, we'll all sing the song. It's kind of I mean, we just and we talk, try to ask each kid what's going on, you know. And even my five year old, like he he's, you know, he has his own version of how the world works, which I think is really awesome. And um, you know, so I, I don't know, man. That's I try to do those things and some of these things that I remember when I was younger, like my dad and mom doing. When we would do road trips, listen to music and talk, and so like th- those things. I I don't know if it's good or bad. I just that's what we do. And it again limits technology. And yeah. then we do I spy. Like I know that seems stupid, but it's forcing the kids to look outside around the window. Outside the window, yeah. 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 So it's like what is, what is actually happening in the immediate world, yeah. not uh, in the whole world. You'd be surprised that they're they're not paying attention to it. Yeah. They're not. Like all the stuff that's going by is just they're just in the car, right? They're not. And when you force them to pay attention to it, it's kinda awesome. Yeah, for sure. Especially at night. I was Blown off of that, I, I was blown away. We, uh, my son, we go to a minute, him, his wife, my wife, my, his wife <laughs> my wife is from Minnesota, and so we do long trips back and forth. And I remember he had dropped his iPad and he had broke it a little bit, but we were going through it one day. And he said, Dad, I want to show you something. I was like, what? He was like, I want to show you videos that I've taken. I was like, okay. That's cool. And he said, this is from our trip. And I'm like, what? And he had been we weren't paying we were driving yeah he'd been taking videos of yeah. stuff he See, had been awesome. seen in. that's awesome and and i was looking at his videos i was like wow and there's videos of trains yeah, videos of signs videos of cool stuff that he was like i want to i want to capture See, that's this. the that's other awesome. side of that right? that's awesome yeah. yeah that that ability to i don't think it's all bad no i just it, think, a million I just think percent isn't, if it's yeah. all in, all consuming i think it's bad yeah yeah, yeah. But I think anything's that way. If but I then, drink too much water, I'm gonna, you know, I can die. Yeah, right? yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Too you know, much just, a good thing. There's a uh, Bo Burnham is a comedian and musician that I specifically enjoy, and uh, you know, he, he makes statements with some of the things. He and I'll show you this one thing later on. He has this song where it's uh, a little bit of everything all of the time, and uh, basically he's talking about the internet and the access to things, and if we're not. Uh, mindful we we do just have constant access and we 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 don't have time to just stop and yeah uh talk to that voice in our head where it's other people's voices we have in our head all the time it's 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 wild there's you know these kids are going to be so much smarter than we are a million percent uh but also it's you know maybe i'm just an old guy on my lawn you know get off my lawn uh so you 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 teach college now right yeah uh how how do, how does that go with the technology and stuff? What so the ages are you know eighteen to twenty two ish and yeah eight, yeah eight, eight, on the average eighteen to twenty two is I'll get lucky and we'll have a uh, someone in their mid twenties or an even Going older back. student yeah, yeah coming back and that's fun right like uh, somebody who comes back and has a little bit of purpose is there because they really want to be yeah 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 I mean 
Yeah, it's because you did that too, didn't you? I did that. Yeah, my whole thing was I check in at eight a.m. and I clock out at eight p.m. Mm-hmm. And you know, and they they knew the only way to get to me was you got to hit me up before eight p.m. After that, I'm going to bed, hanging out with my fam. I'm gonna wake up, do it all over again. But it's neat. Um, they're they're on their phones. They're constantly on their phones all the time, you know. And the phone is always a part of it. But I think if you make your class, if you can find a way to connect with them um, verbally and mentally and make the class something that they want to be a part of, them, their ability to check out on you is lessened. I agree. You know? And so finding a balance between lecture versus demo um, versus just joking yeah. around with them. You know, I, I listen to them. Um, I hear them. They're talking about panic at the disco and everything, and then I hear them. They said, "There, yeah, panic, panic." And I look at them and said, "There's only one panic, and that's widespread panic. <laughs> you like panic at the disco, so." <laughs> <laughs> and and, and I, I jabbed or jabbered with them for a couple of weeks, and then one day I walk in the class, and they, you know, they they weren't there. I had pulled up a bunch of panic at the disco videos, and I was like, "Okay, let's." Let's discuss these videos. Let's look at the lighting of these videos and the how they're yeah. cut together. But also, I'm um, using this to engage what you guys are constantly talking about. You That's know? awesome. Even listen to Harry Styles. I'm not going to listen to Harry Styles on my worst day or my <laughs> best day. You know, I'm like <laughs> just not going to do it. But I did it for the class. You know, yeah. listen to Harry Styles or play movies or something like that, just to keep them engaged. Is Be- there anything that uh, they introduced to you that you were surprised that you enjoyed? I was surprised that I would enjoy the videos for Panic at the Disco. Yeah. I mean, those are some well thought out videos. Yeah. You know, I and mean, that, that's the thing, right? Is that these kids are just going to make the things they're making now are just, uh, they look a little crazy to us, but they are technically just getting better and better and better. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's a, uh, the technology is making it a lot easier yeah. for them. I, I consider this, and I, I talk to them a lot. I was like, we're in. You know, the late, the early 80s or late 70s, 80s was the Wild Wild West in filmmaking at that time because the more the B movies, the indie movies started really getting produced and coming out. You know, you were coming from the 70s and Roger Corman and all those movies from that studio. They were still studio movies, but they were rushed, they were faster projects. The 80s started getting more independent movies. Then the Canon 5D came out in the mid-2000s and completely changed the game. Changed the game, and it's never recovered from it. Actually, you know, the technology's gotten smaller, but like I teach the kids in camera craft, there is there's more content creators out here now. You don't have to use the skills that I'm going to give to you to go make a narrative movie or a documentary or a commercial or everything. There's, you can... There's content, There's more applications, more applications yeah. and more and ways, more access, right? Like, yeah. you know, when you when you did start with filmmaking, uh, you had to physically find someone to learn from. And now you can go online and just have access yeah. to, yeah. you know, if we're talking stocks, we're talking movies, yeah. talking anything, uh, you know, we can just go ahead and learn it uh, by ourselves in a room. It's pretty wild and have yeah. access to the people who are doing it at the highest levels, too. It's yeah. really wild. Yeah, because what I've learned is you know there are different learn there are different ways people like to learn me i can read i can read a tech manual i'll read a book i can learn that way mm-hmm. also i'll just open the box take the instructions and throw them <laughs> yeah. across and just start working you know or i can watch a video of someone showing me how to do something or there's you know or you know there's so many different ways to learn but uh, it's just whatever works and i think now we have the ability for it's instantaneous at our hands so we have the ability for them to use the very different ways for them to learn and still be engaged with mm-hmm. everybody you yeah. know some kids are tactical learn tactile learners you know they need to learn with hands on some kids can just learn from a lecture you're just talking to them yep. you know and so uh, how, how much of uh, what you do for business do you, do you, are, are your kids aware of? Um, overall concepts, probably greatly. Like, uh, so I, I probably would bore most children. Um, <laughs> but, I, I mean, Daniel, Daniel's 11 now. I mean, he's probably um, – I would say he would probably make better business decisions than most teenagers. Sure. Um, I mean, he uh, – 
so he, he got a drone, which he paid half of. And you go, well, how does how, – and I think he was nine at the time. You know, how does a nine-year-old afford half of a drone? Well, the other part of this is is that I don't pay him like he's nine. I pay him like he's an adult. So I pay him the same way I would pay if I asked you to do something, you know, or somebody else, you know, at that at – that, Sure. what the a typical labor rate would be. And that way I'm paying him in dollars, not in pennies. Right, not in quarters and 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 fifty cents here and a dollar so there. He's I'm not actually just interested in doing the actual. Yeah, work. so he can do the work, and then he's he he has to whatever that physical task is, um, and then he has to take and then choose what to exchange that for. And if you buy five dollar items at Walmart or Target on, on the checkout aisle, you start to realize really quickly that you can't save up for the seven hundred dollar item, right? So it teaches delayed gratification, right? Yeah. And you know he he started earning learning at a very early age, along with all my kids that. Um, things have a cost and my time has a value and um he's started to get to a point now so like with his drone he's starting you know he's he records for he actually does footage he's actually starting to it's funny you talk about this but he's actually starting to clip together and add music and add text i mean he's 11 years old and and i'm i promise you it's not me doing it i'm right. literally like hey um we we have a business conversation he says well dad i want to earn money what are some ways for me to earn money we and i talked to him I'm like well you've got the drone we talked about doing packages for, you know, the neighbors, you know, doing, doing videos, doing this, doing yeah. that. And I said, maybe you take that to the next level. Can you add music? Can you add text? Like, and maybe you find out what kind of stuff they want to say. Yeah. And so, you know, he's 11 years old and he's doing a shoot right now. And he's, you know, it's real simple, <laughs> but it's like basic stuff like westward facing sunset, like sunset view, like just like basic descriptions for real estate. Uh, and he's taking aerials with his drone, and he's doing these things for, like, and you know, you, what do you what you used to do back in the day? I would, my dad would tell me, you know, to go out and mow lawns for money. I yeah. went and hit every friggin' neighbor in the neighborhood up and offered to mow their lawn for pennies on the dollar, right? Yeah. And that's what he's doing, yeah. right? So if you go get professionally produced drone footage in the a place that we live, I mean, some of these things can be thousands of dollars, right? He's going out and doing it for pennies on the dollar, yeah. and. People are – there is some value there, right? They're impressed with the finished product, and I'm impressed with what he does. And but it's it, something that they <coughs> couldn't do themselves most Exactly, likely. exactly. And on some level, I would argue that he should do it even if he did it for free. Yeah. Right? Because there's a cost to that too, yeah. Yeah. And, and he's learning his craft, right? Wow. It's just something he's, he's interested in. But, you know, so I, I would say from a business standpoint, I talk business with my kids all the time, which is, you know – Unfortunately, they're going to be cursed like I am with always worrying about um, long-term effects of the decision they make, and that 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 can be a negative because it keeps you from, on some level, it keeps you from enjoying the moment, right? Yeah. It, it can. Yeah. So who knows? But yeah, I, I talk business with them all the time. So it's yeah. uh like with his Legos and stuff. That's I try to take and. So he was really into Legos. He built some amazing Lego, Lego projects. So I found the guy in Vegas, and um, he builds like these awesome Lego creations. Uh, he was in the um, in the circa. He had a, he had a booth set up, and he's been different places. But one of his hockey things he just did was um, for um, for a restaurant was ten thousand dollars. So literally, he goes in. He used to work for Disney, but he goes in and he'll build whatever Lego setup you want, life size. And they range from five grand to fifty thousand dollars. So like I introduced Daniel to him. And just to give him an idea of, hey, like this thing that you do that's a hobby that you're interested in, I think is very educational. I think Legos are a great idea for everybody. But then you also can make money with this too. Yeah. And so I kind of showed him that. Uh, you know, I so mean, being able to to find things that you're interested in and <laughs> finding the value in those, uh, you know, yeah, uh, I've survived the last ten years of my life just only on that. You know, I used to think I just had to. Uh, you could only have a job. So uh, kind of hobbies and the things I like fell by the wayside because there was no money in it. And then when I realized, well, there, there are ways to make money uh, doing things that you actually yeah. uh, enjoy. Uh, letting them know that pretty yeah. early is pretty important, I think. No, it is. So, so imagine this is how the conversation somewhat went like. I said, son, what did this, this Lego thing that I wanted him to build? I was like, what does it cost? And he goes, oh, well, Dad says it right there on the thing. It's $179. I'm like, well, no, 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 that's what it costs to buy it. Right. I said, what's the cost to build it, right? And at the time we had this conversation, he was nine. Mm -hmm. He's like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, well, how many hours is it going to take you to build this? And he's like, I don't know. I was like, why don't you time it? So he timed the build. It was 41 hours, right? And not straight, obviously. 
And I was like, okay, how much do you get paid an hour when you work for dead? Right? Yeah. You just took 41 hours to build this thing. So you have to add in something in, even though you're doing something you enjoy. Mm -hmm. If I would have bought that myself to build it, I would have, what my 41 hours is right. worth much more than his, right? Yeah. I can't take 41 hours to do that. Even if I wanted to right now, I couldn't do it. So we have to factor in something for your time, right? And I was like, this is how businesses work. There's the cost of the product, let's say a piece of wood, right? The construction materials. There's the cost of the materials, but then you have to add something for the labor. And that labor rate is, it, it accumulates over time the, based on the experience of that individual and the, the more they perfect their craft, right? That's how it is in everything, right? Yeah. So when I showed him that, like it took him going through it a few times to fully get it, you know, and then, then there becomes what can, the, what can you charge, right? Right. And so, like, he's starting to learn that part of it, too. Yeah. Like, even though I pay you $10 an hour for this thing, we can't charge $500 for this Lego creation. You're not, you're right. not a famous person. Like, they're not, you're, you're not, <laughs> this, is a, this is a bad joke. You're not uh, Joe Biden's son. <laughs> we can't sell artwork for $500,000 yet. But, but in, in all reality, like, he, he can't get five hundred, but he could get two fifty for the item. Mm -hmm. So he got the experience of building it. He got to document the experience. Um, and he got the enjoyment out of it. And then he got a hundred percent of his money back. Plus he made some money, Yeah, to, you to know, some profit to fund the next project and it still works out. That's you know? a, uh, it's a difficult thing, uh, to, to learn, uh, the value of what the things you make are. You know, I, uh, when I, when I first started making my own artwork, I'd go to these, uh, comic conventions. I, you know, I did these little bead portraits of comedians or celebrities or whatever characters. And uh, I would have this handmade uh, that took me 40 hours to make, and it was, I, you know, I don't want to ask a ton of money. I just want somebody to have it. So I, you know, it's like a hundred dollars, and it's worth uh, a lot of time. But then you know, somebody right next to me would have uh, printed yep. copies of a thing that they made, selling them for 200, and then I'd watch all the people buy that, and it, it used to make me crazy. And, and then uh, somebody explained it to me. I was like. They are valuing it higher, and people are, they think it's worth more. Worth more. Just because of that, yeah. yeah. There are many, many people that just buy the most expensive item. Yeah. yeah. Because they think that that means it's better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah 100%. That's wild. Yep. Yep. Yeah, 100%. So I don't know, but yeah, I, I don't know. Kids is a, you, you, I don't know, man. You know, it's, you try to do the best you can. Yeah. There's no right way. Like, this is just my way. You have your way. Like, everybody's got their way. And I think we all, I think the, the consensus for any decent adult is, that they just want the best that they can possibly provide for their kid, best opportunity, right? Like it doesn't mean you want to spoil them. You just want to, you just want them to be successful, right? I think most parents just say, I want my child to be able to be a fully functioning, to be able to take care of themselves, to be able to protect themselves, to be able to provide for themselves. If something was to happen to me, I want them to be able to take care of themselves. Like that's, that's about all I can ask for. I think, for. Uh, you know, my kids are all adults now in the, in, you know, uh, in their twenties, Jesus Christ, four of them. And, uh, and it, it, you know, just to see them be good human beings yeah. was, was yeah. what I wanted. And now that I, you know, they're, uh, it's, you know, I wanted them to be able to take care of themselves. And what's funny is they had all in much better positions. Than <laughs> <laughs> they did it really quickly. Yeah. Um, we'll probably we'll end up closing this out. But, uh, Jason, where, where can people find your stuff? And, um, uh, like, if, is there anything that you you have going on right now that uh, people can go Go see what you're making. I know you're working on some movies and some music stuff. Like um, that. We just currently uh, we just got a few new recordings from the Prophet's time with our with our drummer, mm -hmm. and so we'll be making those available uh, pretty soon, probably in the next week for What's someone. What's the name to of the band? Prophets of Time. Prophets of Time. You can find us on Facebook at Prophets of Time. Very cool. Um, we're still we're uh, waiting. Kill Giggles is release and everything, and so that's coming up. Kill Giggles is the movie made with Jesse and Jason Buterin. Jesse and I can't Jason wait Buterin. to see this actually. By the way, and uh, <laughs> I just uh, finished my master's degree, and so I have a feature screenplay that came out of that called Spearfinger, and so I'm in the last little bit of proofreading, uh, proof write, proofreading writing on mm -hmm. it, and get that ready to go and uh, get that with the Writers Guild of America and awesome. go ahead and start shopping that around. And I have a Vimeo page that's Jason Ledford that has all my uh, movies that I've done on it and Very all cool. the pieces of work that I've done on it. And so, uh, yeah, just getting ready to uh, get back in the grind. The last uh, two years have been just full tilt boogie. 
um, grinding, getting the, my master's degree, finishing that up, um, then becoming an instructor, a professor of cinematography at Western Carolina University. And so now I'm ready to get back in there and start creating again. The Prophets oh, yeah. of Time will be playing live at Lazy Hiker Brewery on January 28th and then probably another brewery about a week before that. I'm just starting to get more dates up and awesome. get us back out there and Very playing cool. even more. Um, let's talk about uh, really quickly, you guys, this weekend, Jesse, uh, you guys... Yeah. Uh, filmed a, a couple episodes for the new podcast you got going on. Let's plug that real quick. If right. You don't mind. We got a new podcast coming up called the uh, movie Mad Men, which uh, I'm doing with Jason Ledford and, uh, and Jason Buterin. And we had a really good uh, first day of recording this weekend. Um, I think we'll have at least two, two good episodes, maybe three. Yeah. That we'll pull I'll out of that. Yeah. And we'll start um, maybe dropping them in January. What awesome are all like you guys that. talking about with that? Uh, we're talking about basically how we came together as a group, our start, our starts as artists uh, and storytellers a little bit, how we got from point A to point B. Um, and we're going to be talking about more um, what we like and I guess inspirations and things like that. And so we got another... Uh, we're going to get together and look at them, see what worked and see yeah. what didn't work. And just create a conversation about making movies. I think yeah. it's awesome. Man. Yeah, pretty cool. much. And, you know, and then just go from there. And that'll be available, Jesse, here on the channel? Uh, yes, sir. It will be available here on the channel, same YouTube channel and everything like that. We'll, f we'll figure out the if it's going to go on Libsyn or anything like that Hell for yeah. audio. But, Fair enough. Uh, you know. So anybody out there, uh, you know, listening to the podcast who didn't subscribe, go ahead and fucking subscribe. <laughs> Turn the goddamn yes. notifications on so you guys can know when Movie Mad Men come on. Jason, it's really uh, great having you here, man. It's a good conversation. I appreciate Definitely you. Pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, I had fun. Enjoyed it. So I was grilling the chicken the other day. Okay. Oh, wait. Uh, I got to tell you, don't take this the wrong way. I, I, I heard I, I was grilling this chick the other day. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's about to be a whole different podcast. Uh, I was like, oh, yeah? Yeah, hold on. Let me sit up, let me sit up for this one. Hold on. All right, but now that we're talking about food, uh, go ahead. It still wouldn't tell me why it crossed the road. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> <laughs> you got him. You I got. Him. Yeah, I even though I interrupted, you got me with the leg. My bad. I could have swore you said I was grilling this chick the other day. I was like, I was like, oh, okay, yes, I want to hear this. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Appreciate that was good. Right. <laughs> oh, it was a pleasure, guys. All right. Oh thanks. man. Oh wait, I got to do the plug. What's the thing? Oh, you did it. Uh, yeah, I did it a little bit. Oh, well, you you can it. go ahead and do it. You did it. You, you no, you did it. Do it. Go ahead. What, 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 I don't even remember what it is. Where's, uh, where's my? Where's my, uh, right where's there? the, no, I need one of those, uh, reader boards. A I teleprompter. A teleprompter. Yeah, we'll get you one for next. We'll get you one. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go with yours. We're going to go with yours. <laughs> Thanks, guys. That's awesome. All right. Thank Later. you. Bye. <laughs>